Welcome everyone to this uh, first of a series of presentations on the geology and engineering geology of Singapore. My name is Graham Leslie and I've been involved, uh, uh, heavily involved in BGS's commitment to uh, the revision uh, and production of a modern understanding of Singapore's geology. And so it falls to me to present the first of these presentations uh, where I'll provide you with an outline of Singapore's geology and I'll aim also to put that uh, geological understanding in a, a modern regional setting, uh, regional context for you. Uh, further lectures in the series will be presented on the lithostratigraphical framework dealing with the sedimentary and volcanic units of Singapore, uh, the lithodemic framework for the magmatic plutonic uh, units in Singapore. Um, we'll also deal with the Kenozoic superficial deposits, with the structural geology and with the engineering geology. So. As the world's largest city state, Singapore has really been extensively shaped by human activity, including, uh, for example, extensive land reclamation. But the importance of geology and engineering geology in this urban uh, environment has long been recognised. The needs of an expanding population, uh, competing land use requirements, the desire to be a garden city, Resilience to future climate change impacts and the increasing cost of land reclamation have increasingly directed focus towards Singapore's subsurface. That subsurface is now an attractive space for energy production and infrastructure, waste disposal and treatment, groundwater abstraction and water storage, transportation infrastructure and industrial manufacturing and logistics. All of that being the case, a comprehensive understanding of Singapore's geology and engineering geology is required to underpin and inform future development decisions. Today's new digital geological map of Singapore is in many respects a consequence of human modification of the natural geological environment. As a consequence of urbanisation and industrialisation, artificial ground is present across much of the surface and shallow subsurface of mainland Singapore. Those artificial deposits are stripped away on this version of the new uh, digital geological map to reveal the bedrock geology and superficial deposits geology in Singapore. Now, whilst the limited surface outcrop and particularly the degree of tropical weathering makes understanding Singapore's complex geology particularly challenging in places, recent subsurface construction activity and particularly renewed academic interest have generated significant volumes of new data uh, that includes rock core uh, recovered from some 120 uh, targeted uh, 200 meters deep boreholes, uh, the locations of which are shown in the coloured dots on this map, um, mainly as you can see in Western Singapore. Uh, but we also have uh, 2D seismic reflection data uh, collected within about 350 square kilometres uh, area of Singapore. And now we have more than uh, 3,400 uh, in situ and laboratory tests of the physical properties of the rocks that make up the geology of Singapore. To deliver the greater enhanced understanding of Singapore geology uh, that we present here, we've uh, to date inspected some 20 kilometres of rock core and uh, the appropriate core photographs, some of them here. Uh, we've lithologically logged some five kilometres of high priority uh, rock core in detail, and we've probably by now examined some 200 uh, rock exposures across Singapore. There are some, of course. Uh, and particularly including the offshore islands. Subsequent specialist laboratory analysis was carried out on 350 rock samples for things like mineralogy and petrology. So uh, for example, these uh, thin section microscope slides. Uh, but we've also looked at the micro and macro paleontology and palynology. We've uh, carried out radiometric dating <coughs> and carried out a suite of inorganic geochemical analyses. The findings of all of this research, which to date have been published in five peer-reviewed papers in the Journal of Asian Earth Sciences, uh, together with a new map and memoir and a new practitioner's guide, are raising the profile of Singapore geology. 
In this, uh, in this presentation, after a little bit more scene setting, I'll go on to provide a brief outline of Singapore's geology, which will be dealt with in more detail in the, in the accompanying presentations, and then set that understanding uh, of Singapore's geology within a broader regional context. Of course, in geological terms, Singapore is a microcosm of the uh, surrounding Southeast Asia region, the older geological history of, uh, of, of Singapore and uh, Peninsular Malaysia is dominated by Mesozoic events associated with the evolution of the Sukhothai volcanic arc and the collision of two Paleozoic continental plate fragments that underpin the eastern and western parts of this map. So in the east we have the Indochina East Malaya block and the Sukhothai arc was developed on the uh, the leading or, or now western edge of that block. In the east we have the uh, Subamasu continental block and the old, if you like, fossil subduction zone that represented uh, subduction of Subamasu beneath Indochina, East Malaya, is re now represented by the Benton Robe Sucha zone and here it is uh, on the, the geological map extending along the length of Peninsular Malaysia. If we transfer those ideas, that thinking into a schematic cartoon, uh, this shows the active volcanic arc and subduction zone setting for what we think of as Paramo-Triassic Singapore. And here is the, the active uh, volcanic uh, island arc, volcanoes erupting at the surface, uh, granitic and gabroic plutons, being uh, emplaced in the roots of the arc, uh, volcanic product erupted at the surface, coming down the slopes of the, the island arc and, and mixing and uh, being interlayered with siliciclastic and carbonate deposits in the four arc basin, extending from a, a marginal marine setting out into deeper water. Uh, some of the deposits, of course, will be terrestrial in this uh, floor arc setting. So we want to think about how that legacy will have shaped the, the geology and the geological map of Singapore. To start with, I'll show this map uh, where I've uh, subdivided really the, the geology. It's a very convenient thing to do across the trace of the Bukit Timah fault zone because that structure uh, which is a large and long-lived fault, effectively divides Singapore's geology into two main parts, each representing a different component of the Sukhothai arc evolution. Arc-related Permian and Triassic plutons of the Bukit Timah Centre make up the uh, northeast side of the uh, Bukit Timah fault zone in Singapore, uh, where they now mostly concealed beneath the Kinozoic Bedok Formation and Kalang Group sediments, which have stripped away on this map. Uh, to the southwest of the Bukit Timah Fault Zone, we have the uh, uh, weakly metamorphosed rocks of the Jurong Group and Sentosa Group strata. Uh, those were originally deposited in the, uh, the Four Arc Basin setting. And they now crop out exclusively on the southwest side of the Bukit Timah Fault Zone. And again, I've removed the, the younger deposits on this map. We've taken all those sedimentary and volcanic uh, units in Singapore and arranged them into a lithostratigraphical framework. This diagram uh, is like many others in this presentation from the, the new memoir. And so it includes a whole lot of information that uh, bolsters the, the validity, the robustness of the, the stratigraphical framework that we've produced. Um, the oldest exposed uh, rocks in Singapore down here at the bottom of the column are the Carboniferous Sajahat Formation. These are siliciclastic metamorphic rocks and they're now really only seen on Pulau Tikong uh, and at the type locality at Pulau Sajahat in the northeast of Singapore. These particular strata were folded several times over and regionally metamorphosed to a moderate degree, green schist ashes, by late Carboniferous times. And then they were thermally metamorphosed or contact metamorphosed when the Permian to Triassic, Felsic and Mafic plutons of the Bukit Timah Centre were emplaced into them. And in fact, we can find xenoliths of Sanjahat Formation Rock incorporated in uh, the oldest uh, Chua Chukang Pluton of the Bukitima Centre. 
We look at the, uh, the Bukit Timah Centre in the, the north and east of Singapore, concentrating here on the igneous rocks. Uh, the centre, the Bukitima Centre, comprises five discrete and distinct plutons. The oldest of these is the Chua Chukang pluton, which we see in the uh, south and west. Uh, that's followed by the uh, Gombak uh, Gabro granite pluton, then by the, the Dairy Farm uh, granite microgranite pluton occupying this area. Then in the east, we have the Pula Ubin granite uh, pluton. And finally, between the two, uh, and slightly younger, is the uh, Simpang granite pluton. <clears throat> These plutons were in placed at intervals uh, spanning some 55 million years from our uh, geochronological dating work, um, a span from the Permian uh, around 285 million years ago in the Artinskian with the Choi Chu Kang uh, Pluton, the oldest of the Plutons, all the way up into the Upper Triassic around 230 million years ago in the Carnian with the Simpang uh, Granite Pluton. So in turn, we have the Choi Chu Kang, the Gombak, the Dairy Farm Granite, uh, Microgranite Pluton, the Pula Ubin Granite Pluton, and the Simpang Granite Pluton. In this uh, schematic model, uh, the diagram also taken from the new memoir, we illustrate the progressive emplacement and build-up of the subduction-related intrusions that the new Singapore-driven research has revealed. Uh, so to start with, we have in the Artinskian emplacement of the Chua Chu Kang pluton that becomes somewhat foliated before um, the emplacement of the Gombak uh, Gabro granite pluton. Then, and around 240, we have the emplacement of the Dairy Farm, uh, granite microgranite pluton, and in the east, the uh, Pula Ubin granite pluton. And then finally, uh, slightly younger, in between, uh, we have the uh, place, uh, uh, the emplacement of the Simpang granite pluton. From our dating work, it seems that subduction-related magmatism ended in Singapore at around 230 million years with the placement of the Simpang Pluton. But just slightly later, around the same time, explosive release of hydrothermal fluids produced irregular branching networks uh, that we've shown schematically here in, in this diagram. In the late Carnian, uh, possibly we see these uh, emplacement of irregular branching networks of shattered and hydrothermally altered rocks called tophosite, uh, of which uh, more later uh, Martin will talk about that in his treatment of the, the magmatic history and we'll touch on these in the engineering geology as well. The last diagram here also includes the, the dikes of the uh, Singapore basalt andesite dike swarm and includes the Pula of Sakudo uh, Pluton, uh, which was in place in the Upper Cretaceous, but we'll skip these uh, events for now. Martin will deal with the uh, magmatic history of these parts of the magmatic history in his presentation. I'll move on then to look at the southwestern uh, the geology of the southwestern part of Singapore. That's underlain by the predominantly marine uh, sedimentary strata, both on the mainland on the offshore islands by the marine, sedimentary and volcanic rocks of the Jurong group and uh, that comprises four formations. Uh, the Tuas formation, Pula Echuan formation, Pandan formation and Boonlay formation. And uh, my colleague Tom, Tom Doyle will, will tell you much more about the, the geology of these rocks in, in his presentation. We know that the uh, Jurong group uh, were, were uh, deposited in a middle Triassic, Anisian to Ladinian four arc setting that would have been adjacent to the active Sukhothai arc. Uh, these dominantly siliciclastic strata are punctuated by locally substantial volumes of carbonate rocks and volcanic clastic rocks, as well as widespread and locally voluminous accumulations of pyroclastic rocks, pyroclastic flows, and tufaceous sediments. Um, the pyroclastic rocks now dated at around 243 million years ago. Terrestrial to marginal marine deposits dominate the upper part of the Jurong group, and these include distinctive paleosols derived from the weathering of deposited pyroclastic and volcanoclastic rocks. 
The change to more terrestrial environments and deposition roughly coincides with the final stages of active volcanism in the Singapore sector of the arc. The Jurong group strata are overlain by distinctive fluvial sandstones and conglomerates assigned to the Upper Triassic, uh, Sentosa group, Tanjon Rimmel formation, uh, and so that oversteps, possibly on a, on a relatively minor unconformity, uh, the Tanjon Rimmel formation oversteps the um, Jurong group strata. Marginal marine mudstones and sandstones of the Fort Siloso formation succeed these fluvial deposits marking the sort of Norian to Reation return of, for a time, geologically more stable conditions before the onset of orogenic deformation and plate collision that affects the uh, geology of Singapore. Uh, there is an abundance of volcanic plasts in these younger Sentosa group strata that implies that the, the older volcanic arc was now actively eroding. These schematic uh, cross-sections, cartoons if you like, capture the main features uh, of the active and later uh, eroding volcanic arc setting for the Jurong the, uh, group strata in the first of the diagrams, an active volcanic arc, replacement of plutons, volcanic eruptions, material coming down into the four arc basin. The second <coughs> section showing a now rather mature arc with uh, Volcanism, uh, active volcanism waning, uh, beginning to, to cease in reality as Subamasu arrives. And uh, really, we, we're now looking at active erosion of the arc rocks. So these models capture the diverse range of deposition environments encompassed in this four arc setting as it evolved from early to late stages of the arc evolution. They help explain the variety of rock types found in the Jerome and Sentosa group strata and they underline the likelihood that rock types will vary rapidly both vertically and laterally in such a setting, really in any part of the succession overall. The Triassic stratigraphy of Singapore is in fact very similar therefore to uh, strata deposited in the Four Arc Basin to the Sukhothai Arc in what is now Peninsular Malaysia, the so-called Semantan Basin succession. These more detailed uh, constructed cross sections capture really what happened next. Jurong and Sentosa group strata were deformed during the Mesozoic, essentially in the early Jurassic uh, or earliest Jurassic events associated with the Indocinian orogeny in this part of the world. And so all of these strata are now weakly metamorphosed. They're cleaved and arranged in inclined asymmetrical folds that verge or essentially overturned towards the northeast. Uh, and so in the, the cross sections, I've mapped out the uh, unit boundaries to show the geometry and architecture of these asymmetrical folds uh, and shown in places the, the, the steep limbs that result where strata are overturned. In general terms, the strata dip gently to moderately to the southwest, perhaps less often to the northeast. But they can also be uh, steeply inclined and are locally overturned, as I say, dipping in that case steeply to the southwest. Bands of intensely deformed schistose rocks occur um, where these uh, sense of overturning is uh, uh, most uh, strongly expressed, where the deformation is greatest, uh, and, and where uh, local thrust planes are developed. The Passier Laba and uh, Murai thrusts are identified as key mappable structures of this type in Singapore, and both sections show the Passier Laba thrust zone and the Murai thrust or Murai thrust zone. The Murai thrust in particular can be traced all across southwestern Singapore, and so to some extent can the Passier Laba, to be fair. Um, the Murai thrust alone perhaps accommodated kilometres of horizontal displacement driving the by then metamorphosed Jurong and Sentosa group uh, strata back up against <coughs> the igneous rocks of the Bukit Timah Centre. The Bukit Timah Fault Zone has since been superimposed on that junction, uh, on that earlier junction, so we now see the vertical strands of the, the Bukit Timah Fault Zone on both sections. Uh, prior to this, that there may well have been, if you like, a proto-Bukitima fault zone that, it was, that was in some way reflecting 
the juxtaposition of the folded and thrust uh, Jurong and Sentosa group strata uh, back against the uh, magmatic rocks of the uh, Sukhothai arc of the Bukatima center. The precise age of the ductile deformation is uncertain but must postdate the uh, upper Triassic four arc sedimentation. From the regional literature, we know that the collision of Sibumasu, uh, the Sukhothai Arc, and Indochina East Malaya occurred by around 200 million years ago, as I say, in the earliest Jurassic, uh, really bringing this episode of uh, orogenic ductile deformation to a close. It's interesting in Singapore that we see um, overstepping fluvial and alluvial Bonavista uh, formation strata, that's this unit here, and it occurs here on the, the upper of the two cross sections. Um, and it's notable that these strata um, both uh, overstep already folded uh, and deformed Jerome group strata, but are themselves uh, deformed in the, the thrust deformation associated with the uh, Passia lava thrust zone. In fact, these um, <coughs> Bonavista formation strata are conspicuous for their presence in the foot walls of uh, developing thrust zones. So they are, in that sense, syn deformational deposits and strongly reflect the character of the collisional setting, tending to form in the foot walls of thrusts which are uh, bringing up the um, imbricating thrust blocks in the whole fold and thrust belt. If we now move on after the Indocine and Orogeny in Singapore's geological evolution, post-orogenic Mesozoic deposits in Singapore are rather limited in, in scope. Uh, we recognize the Kuzu and Bukit Batok formations as distinct post-orogenic early Cretaceous siliciclastic sedimentary successions deposited in turn. The Kuzu formation we find in the uh, downtown district of Singapore particularly and of course on the type locality of Kuzu Island. The Bukit Batok formation strata are uh, found in small, often lenticular, uh, isolated, fault-bounded uh, occurrences really spatially associated with the trace or close to the trace of the uh, Bukitima fault zone. Deposition of both occurred at a time of regional scale uh, dextral strikes that tectonics that was uh, affecting the entire Southeast Asia region and that probably continued from this time in the Cretaceous all the way up into the Cenozoic. Many of the north northeast to south southwest and northwest to southeast striking faults that I've shown uh, on this map of Singapore, the black dashed lines, um, were, were, were formed or, or at least reactivated uh, perhaps several times over during this time. Uh, that would have included the, the long lived Bukitima fault zone, of course. Now, the precise timing of individual fault movements is unclear. Emplacement of the approximately 98 million year old pool of Secudo quartz monzonite pluton uh, up here on the south coast of uh, Pula Ubin in the channel between Pula Ubin and the, uh, the mainland. That uh, pluton emplacement may indicate oblique extensional faulting at that time, at least in the Cretaceous at 98 million years, as it has a chemistry that is suggestive of emplacement into extensional settings. Moving on then to deal with the youngest parts of the uh, stratigraphical record in Singapore. Now, these, these rocks will be dealt with in more detail by my colleague Tim Kearsey in his presentation. Um, we can start with the Fort Canning formation, rather small uh, isolated occurrence, obviously around Fort Canning in the downtown district of Singapore. And these uh, strata, the Fort Canning formation, uh, are spatially associated with um, always with the Kuzu formation strata and they appear to succeed weathered Kuzu formation strata and are somehow in that sense linked to them. Uh, we also have variably cemented, sometimes almost completely unlithified uh, bedock formation of uh, early Pleistocene, uh, quaternary age that extends over much of eastern uh, Singapore. 
It appears that significant movement on faults in Singapore has largely, perhaps not entirely, ceased by this time. There is some uh, limited evidence of minor movement at this time, but uh, it does appear that the major episodes of faulting predated certainly the Bedok Formation. The nearshore zone and the river valleys of Singapore are now blanketed by late Pleistocene to Holocene, marine to coastal and fluvial Kalang group sediments that represent the very youngest part of the stratigraphy in Singapore, They're really bringing the geological record of Singapore almost up to date. So that really concludes all I want to say in terms of introduction to the geology. I'll go on to say a little bit about the regional geological setting of Singapore to place Singapore's record a little bit more in a wider context. I'd said previously that Singapore's geology is a microcosm of uh, the surrounding Southeast Asia region and on this regional geological map which we already had a brief look at the Singapore to Peninsular Malaysia region had been divided in the literature into three uh, approximately north to south trending tecton of stratigraphical belts simply referred to uh, as the western, central and eastern belts. We've seen that the Benton Rob suture, uh, suture zone is the remnant of the old plate scale collisional boundary between the Sibamasu block in the west, in other words the western belt, and the Sukhothai arc as part of the Indochina East Malaya block in the east and that makes up the central and eastern belts of this map. The Benton Ram suture, as I said, can, as we can see, as I said, can be traced all the way along the uh, length of Peninsular Malaysia, and Singapore must lie some 50 to 100 kilometres east of the Benton Ram suture zone, uh, really firmly within the projected southerly continuation of the central and eastern belts. And so the regional geological map is consistent then with the model that it is the Permian to Triassic geology of the central and eastern belts region of uh, Peninsular Malaysia and Singapore that best explains the geology of Singapore, uh, dominated as that is by the stratigraphical successions and subduction related plutons that record the evolution of the Sukhothai arc, as we now know, between 285 and 230 million years ago. So we have a very good record of Sukhothai behavior uh, Sukhothai arc behavior in Singapore geology. In reality, and stepping back a little further, we know that Southeast Asia is a collage of continental blocks and volcanic arc terrains that are welded together along suture zones marking the sites of destroyed Paleotethys ocean basins. And so the whole region has a rich and diverse geological inheritance. The map is quite detailed even at this scale. And so that uh, explains the variety and complexity of Singapore's geology. Here is modern Singapore towards the southern end of the Sukhothai arc uh, and on the western edge of the Indochina East Malaya block. We can now see that the geological framework of Singapore, its subsurface architecture will have been shaped by the collision of the various continental fragments represented on this reconstruction. The schematic cross-section accounts for the juxtaposition of the Permian to Triassic intrusions in the Bukit Timah Center, here they are, and the, uh, and the deformed and metamorphosed Jerome and Sintosa group uh, successions of Singapore. Uh, the thrust structures are represented in schematic sense as well as the uh, now northeast vergent folding. So all of that uh, structural assembly, the plutons and the fold and thrust belt lie to the east now of the Benton Robe suture zone. The youngest collision related crustal melt plutons cutting into that suture zone are around 200 million years old, as we said before uh, and are recorded in the literature. And so that implies that collision must have ended around this time. So that's then the geological story that, that provides the major underpinnings pin, of Singapore geology. Uh, growth of a, a volcanic arc, deposition in a four arc basin, and then juxtaposition, folding and thrusting, forcing those two uh, earlier elements back together again to create this block which represents the uh, geology of Singapore 
uh, formed in the hanging wall of an old subduction zone now lying to the east of the trace of the suture zone between Sibamasu and Indochina, East Malaya. Following the, that collision of Sibamasu and Indochina, East Malaya, the preserved Mesozoic record in Singapore is, as we've seen, somewhat limited, but it nevertheless fits with the consensus that much of what constituted the continental core of Southeast Asia was largely above sea level by, East, uh, by early Cretaceous times. And that's recognized in the uh, Sunderland landmass outlined by the green dashed line here. Um, Sunderland had become a, a region of relatively stable lithosphere by the end of the Mesozoic, markedly lacking in seismicity uh, and uh, widespread volcanicity, in contrast with much of the uh, surrounding system of volcanic arc systems that had developed around the periphery of Sunderland in the, in the Kenozoic, and, and which of course are still active today. Lower Cretaceous sedimentary successions accumulated on Sunderland in fault-bounded basins, um, often as terrestrial, fluvial, sometimes red bed successions. And the Kuzu and Bukit Batok formations of Singapore are related to this time and can most likely be compared with the Tembeling and Maoko formations of peninsular Malaysia. The localized development of these rift basins point to some extension and areas of renewed Kinozoic tectonic activity within Sunderland. We mentioned the dextral strike slope faulting previously. The controls uh, on that rifting are not really well understood, but are likely to relate in some way to the onset of subduction at the margins of, of Sunderland, uh, well away from what is then effectively a back arc setting for Kinozoic Singapore. And if we come back finally to uh, the map of Singapore, uh, showing the Kinozoic sediments uh, and the artificial deposits, sea level was known to be low around much of Sunderland during the Pliocene and Pleistocene. And fluvial sediments comparable to the Bedouin Formation of Singapore were deposited in many areas of peninsular Malaysia during this time um, that relates to global glaciation. Post-glacial sea level rise around Sunderland is recorded by the stratigraphy of the Kalang group in Singapore, and there the order of two marine clay deposits is thought to date from the last interglacial around 125,000 years ago, while a younger one records sea level rise after the late glacial maximum around about 20,000 years ago. At the time of the late glacial maximum, sea level around Southeast Asia was some 123 metres lower than at present, and Singapore lay in the centre of the extensive, uh, the then extensive landmass of Sunderland being, that was being drained by large river systems. Following the late glacial maximum, sea level initially rose quite rapidly at about one metre per century before rates of rise slowed, became more pulse-like towards the present day, uh, and we see the development of the, the, the modern stratigraphy and the modern geography. So I'll leave it at that point. Other lectures in other presentations in the series, as I say, will cover the lithostratigraphy, the lithodemic units, the structural geology and the engineering geology. So I hope you enjoy all of these. In the meantime, I'll try to deal with any questions that you might have. Thank you.